So we have a flat tire here on our tractor and um, you can buy replacements for these. Uh, there's just really a little uh, pin right in here to pop off and the whole tire will slide off and you can put a new $50, $60 replacement tire right on there. Um, but I want to show you how you can replace this tire for or fix this tire for about $10. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using um, a tire tube that I'm going to put on the inside of this tire and this is going to allow me to repair the tire for $10, put air back into it. Um, the tire tube is actually going to offer me a little bit more additional protection. Something can pierce this outside uh, tire without going into the inner tube. Um, so it should, in theory, help me from having flat tires on a regular basis. First thing that you're going to need to look at in buying the tube is the size of your tire. This is a 15 by 6 by 6. This is tube is a 15 by 6 by 6. So um, buying the right tube for the size tire is kind of a no-brainer. It's kind of the first part of it. Um, in order to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is actually jack my tractor up. Um, there was a time when I would have just lifted this tractor off the ground and placed it on a cinder block. However, my muscles aren't as uh, great, good as they used to be. Um, now this tire is not as tough as a, um, as a tire that you would find on a tractor or a, um, or a car, so it should be fairly easy to pop off the rim without using a, a tire tool. See, we got the front here popped off the rim. Now, the other thing that you'll find, these original tires were tubeless. Um, so, we have a nipple here which was put in there for a tubeless tire. We're going to have to remove that. Probably the easiest way in removing that is going to be from the back side. We just pulled the, uh, the nipple right out of there. Now we have our tube, and to get this in, I'm going to align my nipple with the hole that it needs to go through so that um, the valve stem has a straight shot out. Uh, and then we're going to work this in around the tire, kind of fit it in, and then work it around the rim. We don't need to take the entire tire off of this rim. It's just making it more of a pain in the butt. Our objective here is just to pull this in and get it into place. So now we've got it inside the tire. Now I'm stretching it around the rim. One of the things I need to do while I'm stretching it around the rim is go ahead and make sure that my valve stem is in the proper location because once this stretches around that metal rim, it's going to be harder to swivel and rotate. There we have it. Come in for a closer look. Our new tube is in here. It's put around the rim. We've got our nipple or valve stem lined up with uh, the proper hole. Um, now all we have to do is shove the, the tire back on the rim and put air in it. So now we're basically just putting the tire back on. And by turning the tire, I'm actually using it to help me hold tire end down at the bottom. 
they work this into place. I may even go ahead and lower the weight of the wheel down a little bit. That's going to give me a little more traction in holding it in place. I'm pretty much trying to work my way around the wheel. This would be easier with a tire. tire tool it obviously is a lot easier you just kind of work it in and pop it into place <clears throat> now I'm gonna jack this up again slightly the reason why I'm jacking this back up again is because I want to make sure I can maneuver the wheel around and get the valve stem in the correct placement because if the valve stem is uh, pushed in a weird angle or something along those lines and then you're driving around on it, you could end up uh, damaging your valve stem and having to do this repair all over again. And I'm actually going to pump air in the tire while it is lifted up like this. When you're putting air into a tire this size, it's often recommended that you use a bicycle pump or a hand pump and that's because an air compressor could expand your inner tube way too quickly, over inflate it, and then you're back to doing the repair all over again. Tires this size are so small that it takes just a few seconds to pump them up, not very long. And you can see that as I pump this up, the tire is kind of expanding into place and it's going to reseal itself along the rim. The inner tube is basically adjusting itself inside there because I have the weight off of the tire, giving it ample room to expand and shift into position. Feels firm enough, so I'm going to go ahead and lower the weight of the tractor back down on the tire. And that's all there is to it. We just put an inner tube in here. If the tire ever goes flat again, we can pull the inner tube out patch any repairs that are necessary. It gives us a little bit of added protection from the elements as we're riding around on our lawn, so hopefully we won't have to repair the inner tube as often. Um, and it's just a better way of doing it. It didn't cost me 60 bucks for a part. <laughs>